It's almost like summer's here. Yes, it is. It is. About bloody time. Yeah. Well, what type of uh, tide are we going to have today? Uh, slackening. Going north? Should, should be just a touch of south, but not much of it. And it's an ordering tide. Is it? Yeah, 0.5. That's a big tide. Dano, did he phone you this morning from Inglorious? About lost GoPro. <laughs> yeah. So Dano was fishing on the corner over here and his GoPro fell off a magnetic pole and it dropped down. Oh, in this harbour? Yeah, in the harbour over here. Oh yeah, I can just go and get that. Yeah, you were not allowed to dive in this harbour. But, by the looks of it, the tide's gone down low enough that the steps are exposed right to the bottom, so he probably would have got that back. I did tell him to phone me if he couldn't get it back, so he must have got it back. Not worth even trying because we will get in trouble. The harbour, you're not allowed to dive anywhere in the harbour unless it's Christmas Day. And then even Christmas Day, you're only allowed in this little bit around here. They're really strict on it as well. Really strict. And so they should be. Sunday afternoon, uh, we were going to go yesterday, but the weather was so bad. Then we decided to leave it till Sunday morning. And then because Matt's uh, half century birthday, everyone was hungover. So I wasn't hungover because I didn't drink, but it's Mother's Day as well. So this is our Mother's Day dive. Uh, we'll see what we get. The Viz looks okay-ish. It's a little bit white around reefs, but we should be good. First in the water's Matt. We're going to go just north of the ammo wreck. See what he gets. So we're going to have a little scoot around the ammo wreck. Matt's got his new camera and hells and I don't know if he's going to take it. You taking your birthday present with you? It's behind you, hang it up. Oh, let's have a look at it. Oh, lovely. Yes. That's what I want, lovely. Decent housing. The problem with the GoPro ones is when you go to 60, it pushes the side button in and then you end up doing time lapse rather than an actual, um, does time lapse rather than an actual video. So you're left with a video which is running very quickly at 30 frames per second, but you're only getting one, I don't know what it is, whatever you've got to set it to. It's no volume, there's no audio, which doesn't really matter, but still it's annoying because you've got to slow the video down and any quick movements of the camera looks horrendous. So I've actually had a couple of dives like that that's done that. I've gone a little bit too deep with the 60 meter Helsen and uh, yeah, it's knacking up my footage. I think Matt's had it on the Raffio once as well. So these Helsens I think are rated to 200 meters for GoPro. Was it Isotter? Isotech, nice. Let's hope it's as good as it looks. Yeah, it looks amazing. Well, we have got a little bit of asylum just here. This is the wreck. That's our hydrographic mark, but that's never never accurate. So Matt's going to drop here. There's going to be a little trickle to the south. Just looking at the surface of the water, it looks like there's more than a trickle. It looks like it's moving fairly quickly. Right. Let's, just, let's just see what, what speed we're doing. <laughs> what speed we're doing. We are doing 0.8 knots. So, pretty good. Look this, flag. this looks okay. I'm going to do the dive flag and I'll get the, uh, I'll get the, the ladder in the water right. as well. Yeah, I need to just go slightly north. Slightly north. There's a bit of wood in the water over there, look. Can you see it? Should really be getting that out of the water, but... Okay. No. Nope. Hang on, going astern. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> going astern. And he's gone. It means we need to put a dive flag up. She's up. And I'll get the ladder ready because you never know, you might need that in an emergency. First dive, Matt in the water. 
a little zap cat over there whizzing around. Matt's gone in here and he's going to drift down with the sovereignly tide and then go over the wreck, which is the ammunition wreck. Look at it, summer. Summer feels like it's here. The sun's really high as well. Don't worry, I'm sure the weather will close in again. I want to go over and grab that bit of chunk of wood, but I can't. Can't leave Matt here. Got to stay right near him. It appears that Matt is on the shipwreck. So he's going to use his, uh, his new camera and his new housing. Talking about new bits of kit, I'm actually going to dive with my macro lens today. So I've got a, a backscatter flip 12 with a 15 plus macro lens which has been developed literally for the GoPro so we'll give that a go see what happens see how long it is before I lose it or it breaks fingers crossed it doesn't big log collected it's a bit of donage or something quite chunky see that in the dark probably not yeah that would take the bottom of your boat out of that that'd sink you or if you've got an outboard it'd probably take the skeg off or your gearbox so get out of the water especially anyone coming from this direction you're going into the sun and that's in front of you you will not see it in the water until it's too late but anyway out of harm's way <laughs> not being funny but i know keeney's quite old but i've just found a, a tide table in the wheelhouse here from 1978. Surely Rich is not using that still. No, it's probably the same. The tides will probably come back around. Pretty cool. 1978, probably the oldest one I've ever seen. Apart from the Amanax, the Amanax are obviously older than that. They go back to about 1818, but nah, look, he's also got the, the modern one in there as well. Pretty cool to see though. It would appear Matt is on his way up. You can tell he's on his way up because he's buffs. His meat and veg are together, sticking up. In fact, you can probably see him. It's a bit, it's a bit pasty actually. I don't think you'll be able to see that. I can only just about see him. Oh well. I better get ready. I'm sort of half ready. Got a glove on. Dive computers on is kind of there ready bags ready it's starting to go green there it's because it's been left in fresh water on the boat rains on it come on Matt I haven't been in the sea for 15 days can you see that yep 15 days need to get back in the sea guess what Matt's back What's the bag like? What's the bag like? Woo! Decent, decent bag, decent bag. Good. Not bad. That bag is a lot bigger than your last one. It's a lot bigger. It's still hanging. It was hanging in the water even though I had it on the gunnel. It was nearly touching the bottom. What was it like? Yeah, <laughs> it's like a cut end on a trawl net. <laughs> That's, it's all right, yeah. And the camera. It's a little bit dark. Do you want to do a quick review of the camera casing? Eh? A quick review of the camera case. Oh, very nice. Just you've got to use your finger slightly differently. Oh, okay. No, it's very good. Whoa, a bit dark. A little bit dark. Oh, well. We'll see what we do. We'll see the wreck. Yeah. Where am I going to get in? Where should I get in? I don't know. Is it slackish? It's very little tide. Is it slackish? It's slackish. I'm thinking maybe going down near Forine. Up to you. Yeah. Even though I want scallops, I want to get a couple of scallops. Are you doing one or two dives? Two, two, if you want. Okay, well, I'm well, meant to be back at four o'clock. It's now. Strict instructions. Oh, caught to three. Oh. Right, let's get get me in the water. Drop me north of four on. I think we'll, go, we'll have a little look there. Try and get some scallops before I hit the reef. Four on just over here. Right there, look, we're almost down to it, look. Drifted down to it. Matt, I found a big chunk of timber floating in the sea. <laughs> Don't chuck it back in. 
<laughs> you wouldn't have seen that in the dark. <laughs> so big enough to be a shipwreck. Right, see you down there. Oh. Welcome back below the waves. My name is JP Fallais, and this area is called Mullinay. We are drifting in a southerly direction and we're about 20 to 25 meters of water. We're after these king scallops and this area is a bit weird because you look at the scallops and you're like, mm, is that a keeper or is that, um, is that worth taking or is it even one that's in a dead shell? So it's a bit hit and miss to be honest. Just get the lights on, get a bit of colour. Do you see what I mean by the scallops are really hard to spot around here? A lot of them you just swim past and not expect them to actually be scallops, just empty shells. It's always the ones you least expect it as well. And there's a lot of rubbish that's on top of them. probably noticed if you've watched my videos before I'm actually a male so I don't read the instructions for anything uh, I basically got it straight out of the box and bolted to the front of the lens and I'm probably not meant to be down at 21 meters trying to give it a go probably would have been better off trying it in a bay somewhere or somewhere a bit shallower but hey ho I'll read the instructions next time so the camera hasn't been adjusted to anything I haven't messed around with anything I've just pressed put left it in 4k and press record now underwater I don't know what I'm recording to be honest because I've never really looked at it before. I know I've got to be about 80 millimeters away from whatever I'm filming but we're just point and keep our fingers crossed that it actually works. Certainly not a camera expert, I'll just buy cameras, I don't mess around with them, I just put it in whatever setting I think uh, it should be or if someone tells me it should be like this I'll just do that. Ah, that didn't take very long. Remember last time I said if I see squid eggs again, I'm going to use my macro. Well, I think I've got the time to use it out here. Really easy, you just flip it forward, and that's it, it's on. No messing around with settings. Probably not getting the best benefit out of it, but let's see how close we can get to these. So these here, if you look very, very closely, there's two silver dots. There's loads of them in each, I don't know what they are, finger, I suppose. Those are little eyes for the squid. So basically they drop out the ends of these, hundreds of squids, probably thousands of squids drop out. Don't know if you can just see the little silver dots. See some here on the, on the bit that looks like it's been chewed. And that's it without the macro lens on. So it does actually really benefit. Now I can see it in edit anyway. So I haven't got that many scallops so I better pull my finger out and start trying to find some more. And to be honest, it's, there is a few round here, but it's just kind of an awkward seabed to find them. There's one here on top. I do like it when you get three or four at once. Feels like I'm actually getting somewhere. So you probably wouldn't notice this, but there was two other boats alongside us when I dropped in that were fishing. So there's probably bait and the smell in the water. That's why there seems to be a lot of dogfish around here. 
And there's been a few that have actually swum up to me and bumped into me, like this one. You can see a bit of commotion. It doesn't realise I'm a diver until it gets a bit too close, and then thinks, oh, actually, no, that isn't that isn't a shark frenzy eating bait. I'm off. It's pretty funny to see him swim up to me. Twenty one point four meters and I've been seven minutes twenty seconds diving and I've still got a hundred and ninety bar of air left so I've got plenty. Let's carry on and see what we can get. I need to at least double what I've got in my bag to make it well make myself a bit happy. This is a nice one. Yeah, okay. Are you sure? This is what I was hoping to see. This is a monkfish, very well camouflaged. You can see it's naturally got this little beard, it looks like seaweed, and this one's actually covered in sand as well. So this is what exact oh, this is what I wanted the macro for to be able to film fish like this right up close. Don't worry, it's quite happy with me being there. If anything, I'm more scared of it than it's scared of me. I can't believe its eyes. Its eyes look amazing. <laughs> Even though this was a small one, believe me, you don't want to be messing around with it. This will just bite you. And when it bites you, it holds on quite tight. The good thing about it, for itself, not me, is the fact it's got an outside jaw and an inside jaw. A bit like a moray eel. So it clamp on with its outside jaw and then use its inside jaw to try and take chunks off of you. Really not good. And I've seen some quite nasty videos of uh, Russian divers with their hands stuck in these things and trying to use a bit of two by one to prise its hand back out the jaws. Here's another cat shark, dogfish coming over to see me. Unfortunately, he's not gonna get fed today. Well, not from me anyway. He just tried swimming into me. Just felt it swim into my leg. As with most of Guernsey's east coast, it's completely strewed in probably the last 50 years, 30 years, 40 years, I don't know, uh, of old crab pots. Some have been lost, some have been dumped. One thing you can say for all of them, they're just covered in life. Just inside here, some white and black eggs, those are cuttlefish. Also some egg pouches from dogfish, which are these small ones. That one's been hatched. There's also one here that might even have some babies in it, or a baby, I should say. You can see the yolk sac inside, which is what they normally eat. Let's put my macro on, see if we can film a shark inside this pouch. It's quite hard to try and get the pouch between a torch and the camera lens. There might be a shark in there. You can see that egg part. I think they eat that. But now it's stuck on me. Because these tangible bits just attach themselves to everything. Like little noodles. So a lot's happened on this dive so far. And we're only 13 minutes into it. 
Probably another five minutes. Let's just check our air. I want to save half a tank, so I'm probably going to go in again if I've got time. Strict instructions by my wife to be back by a certain time, but going out diving takes three hours. Doesn't matter if you do one or two dives. Seems to always take three hours for some reason. I'm getting some nice scallops here now. I do always check these rocks because in the past I've actually noticed some of them are the old stone anchors. And Guernsey used to be a smuggling port, so some of these stone anchors used to hold down the barrels. And when no one was looking, they'd uh, go and drag an anchor and pull up the barrels. So always check. Again, another 10 15 meters swim, and we find some more fishing debris. I can say, look, it's always covered in life, it's kind of like an oasis in the middle of a big sandy desert. Some spider crabs. I know it's not ideal when there's tyres on there and the fragments of the tyres contaminate the sea and having tyres in the sea is not that good. So I understand that it's actually bad for the environment but at the same time it creates a, a habitat so maybe we should be recovering this stuff and putting down some stone habitat for it to colonise, I don't know. Or maybe is it not, not worth it? Maybe it's just go down and clean the seabed up and be done with it. It would cost an absolute fortune to do it in Guernsey so unless it's subsidised. I would help out if someone wants to um, say they're going to do it, I'll give them a hand, but for now I'm not going to be having uh, the finances to dump all of this fishing gear myself. always check around the rims of these tyres because in the past there has been humongous lobsters inside these sort of things. Also it seems a prime uh, location for finding lumpfish, especially in Havilah Bay. There is a little bit of debris around here, so bits of metal, I'm not quite sure what that is. But we're close to a harbour, a commercial harbour that's been there for 2,000 years, so what do you expect? Right, I haven't filled the bag up any more than I did, so I've turned the camera off for a few minutes and I've tried filling it up as fast as I could. Uh, I know I've got to take you along on the dive, but sometimes I need to just turn the camera off and turn the lights off and knuckle down. So we're now come quite far south now, and we're actually coming in um, to the shallows, coming up a little bit of a slope. I've got a scallop trying to overtake me, and at the moment he's, he's swimming in front of me. As you know, with everything else, there's always these bottles. I remember these. I can tell you what it is by the dimples up the neck. So this is what you would have bought for someone. This, a bottle of this and some grapes if you're going into hospital. This is Lucasade. Look at the iridescence in it, it's like petrol coloured. Most of this clear glass does do that. It, it's got, it must have a coating on the inside of some sort. And it goes iridescent, like a rainbow. Like, like there's diesel or petrol inside it. Now at 20 meters, I've got six minutes left. What I'm gonna be looking at now is my air consumption or how much air I've got left. I tend to leave 10 and 15 bar to get back to the surface. So I leave at the bottom about 135 if I'm gonna do a second dive. Well, that was another old bottle then, but it was not. It's a pipe that's stuck in the ground. So we'll leave that alone. 
and I've always said this before, wherever you find this rope or cord up, for some reason you find scallops inside it. Um, don't know if they swim there and get trapped and can't get out, or they prefer to be behind it, so as the tide comes over it speeds up, I'm not sure. I can only guess. That one doesn't look like a scallop, but it is. This is what I mean by some of them are, are very surprising. They don't look like they should be... Oh, it's a fish finder. You can just imagine a fisherman getting really annoyed with it and ripping it off and throwing it over the side. Otherwise, why else would you have it on the seabed? Also, there's a few uh, brown edible crab or shankers that are still buried at this time of year. Look at the size of the claw on this one. That's a picked crab, so the... Um, some of the crab pickers over here, well, most of them take all their stuff back out and dump it into the sea, which is a good way, and you're leaving nutrients back in the sea and all the scraps the fish can feed on. This is another thing that seems to happen to me quite a bit. You get loads of scallops at the start, nothing in the middle of the dive, and just when you're about to come up, you start seeing loads of scallops. I'm sure it's not just me, I'm sure everyone's probably the same. But what we'll do is we'll go back to the surface, and if we're gonna do a second dive, which I hope we do, um, I'll just drop back down in the same place. Let's just put this macro lens on. And have a look at this hermit crab. It's a huge hermit crab. One thing I am finding a bit of a nightmare is uh, lighting. Also, I'm filming in 30 frames per second, and I'm sure my LEDs are affecting the um, the picture because I keep seeing black and white lines. I think what I'm going to do is get another camera and just have the macro uh, running separately. Hardly broken any records. I mean, that should cover the cost of me going out on Richard's boat. That'd probably be the well. Matt puts a, a few more into the pile, but that'd be all Richard gets today, I think. Because just check the time and it's getting on. So it's good, good air. But I think I might have saved it for no reason. Because I'm not sure I'm going to do a second dive. I don't know sure if I'm going to have time. Unfortunately. I'm going to say that's three dozen. Uh, no, I'm going to gauge that one. It's going back. Oh. Sounds like bag, right? Cool. I'm taking those steps by. Nothing at all. Six. Not bad. Oh. <laughs> this is 4K, 120 frames per second, slow mo. <laughs> Tell you what, though, do you notice the uh, as soon as there's some bait and all are all the dogfish? Yeah, very active. dogfish. Small little uh, monkfish. Monkfish, yeah, I've yeah. seen a nice monkfish. Fingers crossed, well, we got a uh, macro of it, and macro's awkward to be honest. You gotta get the right lighting, and I couldn't really sort it out. How many do you reckon you got there, Matt? A lot. 
going to be 100 plus. Oh, it's good. Yeah, I'd say 130 there for sure. That's a decent back. Yeah, that's Keeney size, mate. That's a lot. This is, this is a nice man bag. No, this is very saggy. Like an old man's... Satchel. Puds. Yeah. <laughs> nice old man's pud sack. Goes with this, I suppose. Right, I'm not going back in, Matt. I've called it a day. I'm done, so... Let you count yours up. I said to the missus I'll be back by four, it's probably four o'clock now, so... Nice. On the guess, 130. Gonna need another crate. That'd be three boxes for that. Nice. Can you slowly fiddle along and get back in? Yep, sounds good. Let's go. Got a fishing boat coming up here straight towards us, so let's spin around and head home. I think I'll put the flag down while we're motoring. Get the flag down, Matt. Because you're not meant to be motor along with the flag up. Especially if you ain't got no divers in the water. Let's go, because he's going to catch up with us. Full steam ahead. Flat out at six knots. We're going into the tide, we're only doing like 3.8 knots, 4 knots, 4.5 knots, no, 4 knots, 4.6, 4.5, 4.5 knots. Quite good that dive, that was uh, that one's called Moulinet, and Moulinet is a French word. It can mean a few things to be honest, but a Moulinet is when you do a spin. When you're sword fighting and you do a spin around, so it's basically a French word for twist. And Mullinay's the reef over there, so it must be something to do with the tide probably twisting round it. You can also also get a Mullinay on a crane winch where the where the cable goes around round the winch. So another useful fact you probably didn't know about and probably didn't need to know. Anyway, it's home time and thanks for joining us on that dive. I enjoyed that Sunday afternoon, and I think Matt did as well. That's um, Matt working on a Sunday because he's doing it commercially now. I think he's happy. Anyway, thanks for coming along with us and I'll catch you on the next tide.